So my name is Scott Galloway. I'm a professor of marketing at NYU Stern School of Business, and I'm the founder of L2, a subscription business intelligence firm. So some fairly boring things. Um, Revenge of the Brick, the store, which was thought of as a legacy liability, is turning into an asset, and marketers are trying to take advantage of that with omni-channel programs, driving people from clicks to bricks and back to clicks again, and using digital as sort of a connective tissue between the store, uh, the site, and the consumer. And a fairly big trend that's not that sexy is click and collect or in-store pickup. 25% of e-commerce in the UK now is picked up in store. 60% of e-commerce orders at Ace Hardware here in the US is picked up in store. We just didn't know that people loved the idea of buying online or reserving it online and then kind of bombing down the elevator and going to the local store and picking it up. And I think the ad that best embodies this trend is a really clever ad from Walmart that says free delivery if you pick up in store. Uh, so there's um, click and collect, I think it's going to be a, a, a huge trend in marketing and omni-channel more broadly, it's going to be a big deal in 2015. And then the other stuff everyone's talking about, programmatic media is going to con continue to be on a tear, uh, native, uh, but I feel like that's no news to anybody. I feel as if the finally in e-commerce and digital that the promise or that the performance is caught up to the promise. I'm, I'm from the early internet days and started e-commerce companies in the 90s and we got so badly burnt because we really, at the end of the day, the performance, the broadband, the e-commerce penetration the, it just didn't live up to the hype and it feels as if finally the promise or the performance is living up to the promise. that. You can get really great image quality, the online shopping experience is great, the integration of offline and online is there. So I would say just in general, e-commerce is finally, finally truly here, for lack of a better term. So I think it's an exciting time to be in e-commerce. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm getting older, so I'm, I'm increasingly nervous about everything, but specifically, the thing that makes me nervous is this has become really a winner-take-all economy, and it feels like there's a few platforms and a few technologies that are sucking out of the oxygen out of the room for everybody. So I worry about how robust is the industry, and the definition of robust, if you read uh, Nassim Taleb's book, The Black Swan, is, you know, the digital marketing business is not that robust and that there's only a few small players. The U.S. banking industry isn't that robust. If J.P. Morgan goes out of business, every bank will go out of business. Whereas the restaurant industry is really robust. If McDonald's goes out of business, we're still fine. We're still going to have fast food. Digital marketing is becoming an increasingly concentrated number of players who dominate the whole thing. You know, two-thirds of all mobile revenue flow or mobile mark, excuse me, two-thirds of all mobile marketing revenue flow through Facebook and Google now. Apple is kind of soaking up all the profits on a hardware level across mobile. And it says, what does this mean more broadly when there's one or two players that are making 130% of profits and everybody else is trying to stay alive as long as their VCs will fund them or fight over the crumbs? So it's just, it's going to be a strange, it's a strange environment. I think people talk about digital marketing being just such a great place to be. It's a great place if you work at Google and Facebook. It's not great if you work anywhere else right now. Everyone else is, or if you're in programmatic media. But the majority of the innovation is around kind of more for less. You know, Facebook has almost a $200 billion market cap and 7,000 employees. Intel has a $150 billion market cap and 130,000 employees. Unilever, 150 billion, 150,000 employees. The success stories are just um, winner take all uh, and small teams. So I just I worry that how are young people going to continue to get jobs and build careers around an industry where it's sort of a winner take all economy? I think the digital marketing industry's biggest challenge is, is the challenge it's facing all CEOs and shareholders right now, and that is how do we adopt a Henry Ford type of gestalt versus a Jack Welch Gestalt. The Jack Welch Gestalt is we all pray at the altar of shareholder value and we use technology to reduce costs and outsource jobs. And it's very tempting, and I fall into this trap too as a CEO, to try and figure out how new technologies reduce your reliance on people and let you pay them less, quite frankly, and increase profitability. 
Or as Henry Ford decided that even though he could get people for two bucks a day, he paid them five bucks a day, because if we didn't have a middle class, no one was gonna buy cars. And it feels like and the majority of the innovation is really around doing more for less and not focused on how we ensure that we can pay our people well and grow, grow not only a systems application developer coming out of MIT has nothing to worry about. I worry about the kids coming out of college who don't have tech skills and have what I call sort of general old economy skills. Can they make a living and do they find that they're on the wrong side of technology? I think there's tremendous concern uh, um, for civil unrest and I think CEOs have to think, all right, how do I use technology to grow my business as a, and pay my people well uh, as opposed to just figuring out how technology cut costs and increases my profitability every day. Thank you.